Hey, what's up you guys? It's me, Debbie Dubs, and we are back with another video. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. We are here with Olivia Rodrigo's sophomore studio album, Guts. I'm just gonna come out and say it. I'm nervous because she has to follow up Sour, and Sour is an excellent album, and I'm, I'm, I'm nervous because there is a sophomore curse. I'm not saying that she, she, she's she succumbed to the sophomore curse, but I'm nervous, <laughs> but I'm also here. Also, before we officially get into the video, I just wanna say that I'm coming out of being sick. I had a sore throat for five days straight. I am recovering from pink eye. I don't know if I still have it, but like my eyes are somewhat irritated. So don't think that I'm tired or nothing, cause I'm not, I'm here and I'm present 100%. It's just my eyes are still like irritated slightly, but I feel good enough to react. So we're here. I'm so excited. I don't know if this album is about to be like, Olivia revamped if it's gonna give what Sour gave, if it's gonna, you know, be the complete opposite of Sour because the cover art and then the color purple makes me think that this is gonna be like a continuation. But I don't know. When she released the cover art, she said that this album was about growing pains and figuring out who she is at this stage in life and that she felt like <laughs> she had lived an extra 18 years of life between the age of 18 and 20. So she clearly feels like she's in a different place, but will the music reflect that? I'm actually so excited. I don't want to even talk about it anymore. We're going to get right into it. Follow me on my social medias here and link down in the description below. Like, subscribe, share with your friends, do all that good stuff, and click the notification bell for me. Here we go with Guts, the sophomore album by Olivia Rodrigo. At a runtime of 39 minutes with 12 tracks, here we go with track number one, All American Bitch. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's such a sick title. That is such a sick title. Oh, come on. I pay attention to things that most people ignore. And I am built like a mother and a total machine. Ooh, I love that melody. Feel free to every little issue. I know just what you mean. With that line, she feels like she can relate to whoever it is that she's referring to because she went through it all already. She went through a lot during the sour era. So she feels like she's mother yeah. and a total machine. She knows how things run now. She knows how things go. And she says, I feel for your every little issue. I know just what you mean. Cause she did it already. I have to go back already. I, w I thought that we were gonna stay like very like soft and strummy. I was not expecting the flip, but you know what? I'm happy we have a flip because it's kind of reminiscent of Brutal and I think Brutal is such an excellent opener. Darkness, Oh, she know we're gonna get the bitch later. We're gonna get the part. <laughs> That's excellent. Making us wait for it. Oh, come on, Tone. Come on. Oh, she ate this already. 
She, yeah. Oh, we're in for a roller coaster. This album is about to hit. One, already, the contrast between this song and Brutal. Brutal, she's so green. And by green, I mean, like, she's new. She's talking about, like, just her experiencing life and how she's sick of it. I'm so sick of 17, where's my teenage dream I swear to God I'm gonna die God it's brutal out here like she's talking about the things that she's experienced and she hates it she wants out not really this intro she's still talking about the things that she's experiencing she's talking about it with this like newfound confidence like the fact that she's calling herself a bitch in the endearing way not the insulting way but like she's this all-american bitch and what does she say after that in the bridge with the all-american lips the perfect all-american hips like she knows that she's that bitch now. She's stepped into this new level of confidence and it's so evident in this. All the time, I'm grateful all the time. I'm sexy and I'm kind. I'm pretty when I cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the growth is here. The growth is definitely here. We love sad bitch, bad bitch, confident energy because that's exactly what this is. She's still very emotional, but she knows how to handle it a little bit better. All right, here we go with track number two. A song that we all know and love. We're going to listen to a little bit of it because I reacted to the full thing already. So go ahead and watch that later on. Here is Bad Idea, right? Again, this song kind of reiterates how she's feeling in the first song, like her position in life at this current moment in time. She knows what she's doing, she's aware of herself, but in this song she's like blatantly not caring about it. In the opener she's talking about how she's much more aware now and she's learned from things, but in this one it's like, I'm aware, but I don't care. Okay, it's fine, I'm coming over. All right, next we have track number three. We're about to get the singles out of the way. Track number three is Vampire, the lead single. I also reacted to this song and music video, so we're gonna listen to a little bit here. the satisfaction asking how you're doing now how's the castle built of people you pretend to care about just what you wanted look at you cool guy you got it she has like the perfect amount of softness in her voice my brain goes blah i'm sorry that that moment gets stuck in my head a lot oh when she starts climbing the scale slowly come on The way that she holds out that high note, the way that she holds it out is like just pure. Sorry, that's excellence. I damn near listened to the whole song. Like, I was supposed to be listening to a little bit of it. Also, before we get into new material, because the rest of this album is about to be all new stuff, I saw the track list earlier today for the first time, and none of the songs really called out to me, except one, Making the Bed. I don't know, there's something about that title that slightly called out to me more than the others did. I don't know if that's gonna be my favorite, but I'm gonna say that that's my claim track. Here we go with a new song, track number four, Lacey. 
Come on, strong. Lacey, oh Lacey, skin like puff pastry. Aren't you the sweetest thing on this side of hell? Oh, dear. Hell. <laughs> Oh my god, why are they in hell? There's some type of effect on her voice to where it sounds like a little sinister like it sounds a little scary Like I don't know if she likes Lacey or if she's like being nice in Lacey's face and really doesn't like her I don't I'm not completely sure yet Like the song sounds sweet and there's like sweet lyrics coupled with very s Scary lyrics like why is Lacey the sweetest thing in hell? Why are the compliments like bullets? I'm getting a sense we don't like Lacey, but we're being nice to Lacey. Period. Okay. Damn. Okay. I get it. Lacey is someone that she clearly envies and is jealous of. She wants what Lacey has. Will Lacey give it to her? No. No. By the end of the song, it's very evident that Lacey is someone that she does not necessarily like, but does envy at the same time. Like that popular girl in school who is kind of mean and bitchy to everybody, but like you can't just help but envy her because she's beautiful. The way she just walks and her hair blows in the wind. I wonder if Lacey is someone, like if there's actually someone named Lacey, or maybe there is someone that this song is about, but she changed the title. She changed the name to Lacey. But yeah, she's clearly envious of this girl, and I like how she wrote about it. Like, the way that this song was constructed, you went into it not knowing how she really viewed Lacey until the very end of the song, when she, like, just came out and admitted how she felt. But towards the beginning, she's complimenting her. She, she throws in, like, slight jabs here and there, but, like, the song sounds sweet. She's calling this girl sweet. She's being nice about her, and then, like, for brief moments, she's hiding these insults with compliments. But towards the end, she can't really hide it anymore. I like the uniqueness of like her constructing this song. Because it sounds sweet, but it's not. Alright, here we go with track number five, Ballad of a Homeschooled Girl. Okay, this not being a ballad makes this sick already. <laughs> The first part of this chorus sounded so cool. I really like the dun 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 The way she kind of like slowly went down the scale, talking about the things that she did that she shouldn't have done at the party. Especially for the Teen Vogue party. Last time time sat with the wrong guy, searching how to start a conversation on the website. Talked to the talk guy, swore it was his type. Guess that he was making out with boys at the party. Everybody do his Every guy. This lyric has been going viral all over Twitter. I'm so weak. And before people get upset with her, she's just saying in all the experiences where she's 
talk to guys, they turned out to be gay. I don't, like, I feel like this is gonna cause some type of controversy with her, and I don't want that because I don't think she meant it in a negative way. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been put in the song. Like, she's literally just telling us her experiences with guys that she was attracted to, and I can see someone out there saying like the bi erasure. Well, maybe she's not talking about bi guys at this moment in time. I just want everybody to, to really think about it before they go to Twitter and like yell at this girl. But I do want to go back a little bit. The last wrong time style with the wrong guy. Searching how to start a conversation on the web. I talked to That's the so guys. real. Was his type. Guess that he was making out with boys in the I love that. I wish that the first time that she says it's social suicide, it's the same melody as each time I step outside, because I love it. Each time I stepped outside, it's social suicide. But she like, suicide, which is not bad, but I, in my head, I think she's gonna repeat that melody, but she doesn't. <laughs> Oh, come on. I want that again. Oh, come on. Not, can't think of a third line, so she takes us out with la la la's. That's so real. <laughs> oh, she's funny. I love the way she writes. She's so funny. Like, what about this song was a ballad? It wasn't a ballad at all. And it's literally just her talking about her social mishaps, trying to date, trying to flirt, and like just failing completely. <laughs> and then she finishes with, can't think of a third line, so I'm gonna give y'all some lies and y'all are gonna enjoy it. And I did. Here we go with track number six, my claim track, Making the Bed. One so got it, did it so it's done. Another thing I ruined, it used to be fun. Oh, I love the key. I already love the key in the intro and how it was very like soft and there's this like whirring noise. Yeah, 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 one, one more time. time. One so got it. I don't even know why this has me tearing up. I don't know. So far, instrumentally, this one is already my favorite. I want to start it over again. And she's speaking real. Want it so I got it. Did it so it's done. Another thing I ruined, I used to do for fun. I thought it so I said it. Took it because I can. Another day pretending. I'm older, I'm older than, than I am. am. Like, I love the lyrics. Love the instrumental. Just love it all. My prophetic read. Like, did I know that I was gonna like this? So now I like it. Like, am I hyping it up and liking it because I said I was gonna like it? No. It's just that good, actually. <laughs> like, just listen. The birds chirping. The the nature sounds. No, no, no. Listen. Another piece of plastic could just throw away Another conversation with nothing good to say I thought it's oh. what I said it Took it cause I can Another thing I forced to be a sign But sometimes I feel like I don't wanna be Where I am getting drunk at a club With my favorite thoughts Oh I 
stops the road Write some words cause my life feels so out of control And I tell someone I love them just as a distraction They tell me that they love me like I'm some tourist attraction They're changing my machinery and I just let it happen Getting drunk at a club with my family Yeah Yeah I love that. I love this. <laughs> she's talking about like the situations that she's in. At the end of the day, she's making the bed. She's putting herself in those situations, but she can't help but feel the way that she feels still. And I feel that. I don't feel it probably to her extent because she is in the music industry. So I know there are a lot of times where she maybe has to do something because it's her job or she wants something to be a certain way so she has to go somewhere or she has to you know do this interview or meet these people and now she's in this situation that she doesn't want to be in but like she's there for a reason she kind of has to be there even where she says getting drunk at the club with my fair weather friends like she wants to go out and have a good time but like at the same time she knows that it's a bad idea right <laughs> she shouldn't but she does, and now she's like regretting being in this situation. And I feel that. And they're like, I don't know what fair weather friends. I wanna assume like these are friends that are not like whore, whore. These are friends that are not in her core friend group. Like these are not core main friends. I say yes just to get out of the house, and she probably said yes just to, you know, be in a different environment with these people, and then she ends up regretting it. I think that's what this is about. Regardless of what the song is about, Sonically, it's my favorite so far. I love it. It's so calming. It's so soft. It's so soothing. It's kind of like muffled. Like the kick and the snare has this like echo to it, but it's not like right up front in your face. It's very like playing the back while her voice and the melodies play the front. That melody. Yeah. I don't think this is going to be topped. I, I, I don't think it's going to be topped. One, so I got it. I did it, so it's done. Another thing I ruined. I used to do for fun. Another piece of plastic. I just throw away. Another conversation with nothing good to say. I took it because I can't. It doesn't feel like mine. Another thing I forced to be a sign. That's so real. It must be a sign, you guys. So, like, we have to. Sometimes I feel voice not like pulling at you right now how is it not pulling at you the way it's pulling at me okay i can't listen to this full thing again we're gonna have to go to the next track or yeah i can definitely see this song being one of those songs where when i'm listening to the album i'm only gonna get halfway through because when i get to this song it's gonna be on repeat and i do that a lot i have a really bad habit of doing that track number seven <laughs> logical i gotta tweet about making the bed though i have to I have to. I need to let people know that this is my song now. Back into Logical. So sorry for interrupting you, Logical. Let's go. Master manipulator. God, you're so good at what you do. Come for me like a savior. I'd 
I think this might be about the same person that Vampire is about. Now, I'm not gonna say the name because I could be wrong, but I also watched the Cancel podcast with um, Tana Mojo and Brooke Schofield. Schofield, I don't know how to say her last name. I love Brooke. I want to marry her. Hi, Brooke. If you're watching this, she probably isn't. They were talking about this song being about someone that Olivia dated, and I think he's also a producer. And the only reason I think this song is also about him is because she mentions the age thing again. And I'm almost certain she mentioned their age gap in Vampire. So it makes sense that this will be a continuation of that song and like another song about this same person. You built a giant castle with walls so high I couldn't see. How's the castle built of people you pretend to care about just what you wanted? He bleeded her dry, sucked her dry like a vampire. And in this song, it's just like expanding on how he was manipulated to manipulate still, but how he manipulated her and basically just confused her. She even goes to say love is never logical. So like she kind of saw the red flags, but then again, when you have somebody that's manipulating you, are the flags really red? When you're in the relationship at least. I look so stupid thinking two plus Oh, this stripped down. You went from this like arpeggiating piano, and then for this outro, it's literally just like one note being tapped over and over. Keep it going. Track eight. Get him back. One, two, three. Wait, is this the song with the drums? I met a guy in the summer and I met him in the spring. He argued with me about everything. He had an ego and a temper and a wandering eye. He said he's six foot two and I'm a dude. Nice try. I remember every time he made a pass on my friend. Do I love him? Do I hate him? I guess it's up and down. If I had to choose, I would say it right now. Sorry, there was a bug in here, a fly. Ooh. Oh, she's so slick. That double entendre of getting him back. Throughout the first verse, she's like going back and forth. Like, do I want to keep engaging with this person? Like, he's doing like icky, red flaggy things. So I should distance myself. But like, he could fly me to France at any given moment. Why would I give that up? So for her to get to the chorus and says, I want to get him back, it's a play on words because the back and forth of it all, meaning she wants to get him back, get revenge on him, but also get him back, like engage with him again. 
be with him again. She wants to get him back in a good way and get him back in a bad way. Also, the rapping at the beginning, like the rap talking, and then we get to the course of like the singy vibes. I love like the, the difference. I pour my heart out, but as I'm hitting send, I picture all the faces in my distance. Come on. I love that part. I don't break his heart. And they the it up. Oh, my God. Really going back and forth. I love that line so much. This outro, this part is very reminiscent to the to the instrumental in um deja vu. The burn. I love it. The way the guitar just goes off with the drums, the trash can drums, this is very reminiscent of that. Period. This song was so fun. Oh, this song was so fun. <laughs> the dynamic of it all. There was that like intense energy towards the beginning where it's like very grunge and she's like doing that talk rapping. And then we get like a slow strumming moment, a soft stripped down strumming moment just to really get back into it again. Like everything was thematically on point. Her lyrics talking about getting him back in a bad way, getting him back in a good way. You have that back and forth. And then you have the back and forth with the instrumental as well, giving you really highs and giving you really lows. Oh, she's excellent. If you didn't notice right now, by now, I'm a stan. What are her stan names? Or her stan, what is her stan? What are her stans called, I guess is how I'm trying to say that. I've seen Livy's, but I didn't know if that's actually it. If that's what it is, then I'm a Livy. For sure. All right, here we go with track number nine, Love is Embarrassing. Oh, she sounds different. She's definitely like putting on this edgier voice. This like, it's it's not as soft as how she normally sings. It's, it's, I wouldn't say it's like super edgy, but you can tell it's like a level up from the softness in which she normally sings. Jesus, what was I even to? This one, I'm gonna say, at first I wasn't feeling it like I've heard better on this album alone. But I like the the Avril Lavigne-esque, the, the punk rock 2000s vibe. And I like how in the song she got very theatrical. The way she was talking and like just the inflection in her voice. But lyrically the song is okay. It's not a bad song, it's not a super amazing song. Yeah, Love is Embarrassing is okay. Here we go with track number 10. The grudge, the grudge of it all. Ooh, 
I love, sorry, she's literally about to come in and I just interrupted her, but I love like slow, soft openings like this. Don't you guys? Don't you guys just love it too? It's nightmares each week about that Friday in May. One phone call from you and my entire world was changed. But I hold on to every detail like my life. Mm. My undying love, now I hold it like a grudge. Now I hear your voice every time that I think I'm not enough. What happened? What happened on this Friday back in May? I have nightmares each week about that Friday in May. One phone call from you and my entire world was changed. This says in the Driving Home to You documentary, which I have still haven't seen yet. That's crazy. Maybe I'll react to that on Patreon. In the Driving Home to You documentary, Olivia mentioned a boy breaking up with her when she was on her way to Salt Lake City. Damn, not even face to face. She was driving. <laughs> That's crazy. That's so disrespectful. This is the same day she started writing one step forward, three steps back. It was likely about the same person. All right. At least have the decency to do that. If you're going to break, and I'm not saying stay in a relationship if you're not happy. This person has every right to break up with her if he doesn't want to be in the relationship. Same with her, with any other relationship that she's in. If you're going to break up with someone, at least do it like respectfully and in a decent way. Doing it on the phone while you know this person is traveling is crazy. It takes strength to forgive, but I don't feel strong. Mm. The arguments that I want against you in my head, in the shower, in the car, and in the mirror before bed. You must be insecure, you must be so unhappy, not knowing the heart. Her people, her people, and we both drew blood, but man, those cuts were never equal, and I try to be tough, but I want to scream, but you know I can't let it go, I've tried, I've tried, I've tried for so long, it takes strength to forgive, but I don't feel strong. Mm. Fortunately, I have not been in a situation where I felt like emotionally or physically at the mercy of someone else, but I can imagine how just like heart-wrenching that is. Trying to get over someone, trying to move past someone, but you can't, you want closure, and you know that this person doesn't want anything to do with you, so there's no way to get the closure. There's no way to even like begin to rectify a situation where the other party doesn't even want to be a part of it. They don't want to be involved. Breaking up with someone, yeah, yeah. I'm ex I'm inexperienced in that department, if I do say so myself. Oh my god, I just saw this tweet that said, Billboard ranks Lacey as the worst track off of Guts. I have to disagree. I think I have a worst. We're going to talk about rankings at the end. We're almost there. Let me get off my phone and actually finish this reaction. We have two more songs. Let's go to track 11, Pretty Isn't Pretty. <laughs> Let me just stop to say that this has like that 80s pop rock vibe and I already like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go, let's go. Love the way she's holding out the notes. First of all, she dipped really low at the beginning. Bought a bunch of makeup. I bought a new prescription. Like she's holding it out. It sounds so good. Yeah. The melodies that she's been choosing throughout this entire album eats. Remember, she gave us those lows at the beginning. And then throughout the middle of this chorus, 
I could charge up my body. I could charge. Like she's going there. She's taking us there. Yeah. Now me absolutely like rocking out to a song about like beauty standards and how she feels like she's not meeting them. <laughs> That's just what she does. The sad girl, sad bitch, bad bitch energy. Like the song is very sad because of the lyrical content, but like you don't want to move when you hear this instrumental and then the vocals coupled with it. Like, come on. Yeah. Once again, this is something like the everyday person can feel her for, but I know that it's so much harder when you're in the music industry or just in any industry or any spotlight in general because you do kind of want to keep up with, uh, with all the trends and everything because you know people are vain. The better you look, the better you'll be treated just in everyday life. But when you're an artist, being watched, being under the spotlight 24-7, you know that that's like heightened. Look at Sam Smith. They have been getting so much like just backlash and just negativity thrown their way and being treated so badly because of their appearance now. They've talked about how this is the best they've ever felt because they've stopped starving themselves. Like I said, the everyday person struggles with this stuff, but I know it's very much intensified when you are under the spotlight and you have people just judging you every day for how you look and what you're wearing. And I love her like honesty about it. She's very honest and vulnerable in, in her lyrics in general. All right, we have one last track, the closer track, track 12, Teenage Dream. Let's get right into it. She's already talking about like the immense pressure of being under the spotlight and the immense pressure of just being her. And she's kind of wanting to, to combat that. I don't want to be wise beyond my years. I just want to be wise at the age that I should be wise. When am I going to stop being a pretty young thing and just be pretty? Like why do I have to be a pretty young thing to guys? She doesn't want those kind of compliments because they are compliments saying like you were wiser than you should be, but like at the same time, that's putting expectations on her, and she doesn't want that. I'll blow out the candles, happy birthday to me. Cause your whole life ahead of you, you're only 19. Mm. I'm sorry that I couldn't always be your teenage dream. And once this wide eyed affection and all the good. That like drone out the way it <laughs> well, I spend all the rest of my years wishing I could go back. I'll blow out the candles. All the strings. bring that back I gotta bring that back but before I do I love how this song is like 
a connection to Brutal. The way that she's talking about her age. Um, what is the line in Brutal? I said it earlier. Um, I'm so sick of 17. Where's my fucking teenage dream? Like, they're very si <laughs> Wait. They're more than similar. I just realized this song itself is Teenage Dream. And I, oh, what did she say? Got your whole life ahead of you, you're only 19. Oh, she did that on purpose. Connecting the songs, that's so sick. I didn't even make the connection that this song is called Teenage Dream. And she uses those same lyrics in Brutal. All right, so what, we're here two years later and she kind of has the same sentiment. <laughs> Baby live. Yeah. Sophomore curse wear. <laughs> she superseded my expectations, actually. If we gonna be real. Yeah. I, I, I'm trying to think of what to say. <laughs> this album crushed it. She gets better and better with her lyrics. And I think one thing that makes it easy for me to digest her lyrically is that it's not super complex, but I don't want to take away her credit from being a good writer. Like, I don't think complexity equals good writing. I think good storytelling, emotion, and just like authenticity is also like qualities that you need to have when being a good writer. And I think she has those qualities. And the things that she talks about for the most part are relatable. Things that I've gone through, like, for the most part, the relationship stuff, I haven't really experienced. But, like, when it comes to relationships in general, not specifically romantic relationships, I feel her 100%. It's so easy to hear what she says and then understand what she says and feel what she says. She did it better lyrically on this album than Sour itself. Now, I'm not going to try to do comparisons right now because I've had Sour for about two years. Whereas this is brand spanking new. So I don't want to, I don't even want to get into that. I do want y'all to get into it in the comments. Are we going to, yeah. But I do think that this is a really excellent album right off the jump. You feel and experience in general her growth. Her growth as a vocalist because her vocals are better on this album. After Sour to Now, like this new era, this journey, we get like a clear understanding of like what she went through her headspace going through it all. This album is not necessarily better, but it is elevated in terms of artistry, 100%. If I go back and listen to Sour, I wanna say that there are moments that I find corny, but they're acceptable because she was 17. 17 when the album released, I wanna say, but 16, maybe even 15 when writing the album, who knows how young she was during the writing process and production. But, you know, the corniness is okay. She's young. And she's still young. There were no corny moments, but she's still able to be like authentically herself which makes you feel that growth because it was very natural. Nothing seemed forced, nothing seemed fake. She did her big one with this one. Now all I gotta do is get these tickets whenever she drops them because if she does another small tour like theaters, oh my God, I'm never gonna see her. I hope she does arenas. She's big enough to do arenas. I don't know what I was about to say, but I love this album already on my first listen. It was a roller coaster of emotion. It was intense and soft at the same time. The dynamics were all over the place in the best way possible. Out of the 12 tracks, I saved 10 of them. So there are two songs that I did not save. I did not save Lacey, <laughs> which maybe Billboard had a point. And then I did not save Love is Embarrassing. I did save All American Bitch, Bad Idea Right, Vampire, Ballad of a Homeschooled Girl, Making the Bed, Logical, Get Him Back, The Grudge, Pretty Isn't Pretty, and Teenage Dream. I think I have a solid top three as of right now. Making the Bed is number one, it's number one, it's number one, it's number one. One of one, the only one. I'm gonna give number two to Get Him Back for now with an honorable mention to Logical. Cause Get Him Back is fun. It's loud and most parts she did like the rap talking thing. Yeah. And then number three has to go to Pretty Isn't Pretty. Actually, if I had to re-rank it, it's Making the Bed, Pretty Isn't Pretty, and then Get Him Back with an honorable mention to Logical. Because making, making the Bed and Pretty Isn't Pretty are both 
very pretty songs. Those are the songs that stand out to me the most. Wait, I forgot about All American Bitch. So my top three is Making the Bed, Pretty Isn't Pretty, and then All American Bitch with an honorable mention to Logical and Get Him Back. Those are my top five though. I think that's in my top three. I don't know. Those top five songs are all in my top three, okay? Okay. I'm sure it'll change as I listen to this album more and more and the live performances are gonna change it up too. I'm excited. Now you need to comment your top three down below and you need to comment if you like this album better than Sour Already or if you're gonna need more time with it. I wanna hear every single thought in your mind that you had while watching this. Spam the comments with literally everything. If you just wanna say hi Debbie, say hi Debbie and I'll say hi back. But if you wanna talk about the album, comment down below, okay? I want things that I missed maybe, like analysis and just other things about the songs that I maybe didn't catch in my reaction. Whatever you gotta say, just say it. This has been Guts by Olivia Rodrigo. Thank y'all for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed the album and my reaction to it. Follow me on my social medias here and link down in the description below. Like, subscribe, share with your friends, and of course, click that notification bell so you're always notified when I post Olivia Rodrigo content. This is just the start of the era. I always say this, when the album comes out, the era is just starting. So I'm excited. Well, imagine if she gives us a guts prom, like a sour prom, but guts prom, or maybe like a different thing. A, a, a guts festival, guts con, guts eating con, I don't know. Some type of event where she does a medley of songs, like a, a visual, I would love that again. Anyways. Thank y'all so much for watching. I love y'all, and I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.